Hi guys, Tom from Drop Zone, Drop Zone Commander. <laughs> Tom from Dreamlight Gaming. Um, right, okay, so scared to grab the initiative. Um, I get to pick one battle group. Not, they're all in readiness, and uh, they all sit there in readiness. Um, you know, there are things in reserve in the game, but they tend to be aircraft flyers, uh, your interceptors, things like that. So I'm going to pick my infantry bases because I want them to move on. So we have a look at the Marauder Medium Dropship Entry, and it's got a move of 24 inches. Okay, it does have weapons, and every weapon has what's called an MF value, which means if you want to fire this weapon, your movement is limited to 12 inch in this case. Now in drop zone, you can choose to move then fire, or fire then move. It is entirely up to you. Okay, but for the purposes of this, I think I want an objective, <laughs> so I'm just going to fly a dropship on. So 24 inches, and we'll go from there. So if I grab my dropship. I'm going to sit the one of the APCs on top, just just for clarification for my opponent if I had one, um, as to what's happening. So I measure 24, and it's all measurements, guys, are from the edge of the table. You are flying on. Absolutely simple as that. Now, buildings, all aircraft are assumed to be six inches high. So if I measure that building, it's just shorter than six inch, so I can fly over it. Whereas that building, that building, that building, aircraft are blocked movement wise by those. Okay? So I am literally going to zoom 24 and sit myself behind the objective building. Okay? Now, it's better to hide. And I've, because I've moved 24 inches, my max flat out move, I can't land. Okay, landing takes two inches of your time to drop your troops off. So if you want to land something, bear in mind, tactically, you're going to have to think that through. But he sat there waiting for next turn. So it's the UCM's turn. Now, if I see people bringing infantry on, aircraft, I probably think my anti-air is going to be quite useful. So if we look at the UCM profiles, and we look at the Condor medium dropship, now, Condor has a move of 18. Okay, <laughs> so it's not amazing, but it's, you know, better than nothing. So I think that I'm going to move Condor full of the rapiers on and I'm going to land it. So I'm only going to move half distance because, again, half distance allows me to land and discourse troops. So it's going to take me full nine min move for me to actually do anything so fly on. again let's measure the height of that building I can fly over it so I can either fly over it and land next turn or I can fly down the side here because I need two inches to land check my landing template which I have somewhere I did have <laughs> somewhere anyway we know it's fine and he's going to move seven inches to there and he's going to land. Okay? Landing allows me to disgorge my troops. Now, all vehicles can be three inches away, so I can bring out my anti air. All measurements, guys, are done from the stem. Okay? See, so I'm going to put that there and you're going to think that's not three inch tall. It's all from the stem in drop zone, guys. The stem and the base, so it doesn't matter how cool you make models look, you measure to the same point. And the AE tanks. They're going to go down there. Now the separation is a standard coherency, which means the tanks in the unit can be three inches apart from one another. But obviously in the tight confines of that, that's all they're going to do. So they move, they discharge, and they can now move half distance. Okay? Now a tank, <laughs> being less than, than fast, has only got a four inch move anyway, so they can move two inches. Okay. Measure central to central again, two inches. I'm going to move them up just by eye because at the end of the day I would have somebody else holding the camera normally. Okay, and there we go. So they're going to move, start moving out to the entrance. It now switches back to the scourges go. So we look at our next thing. I mean, anti aircraft is devastating because AA. Which you see, I've brought on over there. Are the only things that can actually target aircraft, including dropships. So, 
Now I've got to think, do I want to bring my AA on? Or do I want to bring my actual tanks on? Now if I think about it, I think AA is probably a tactical advantage. So, again, 24 inches. So the scourge are quicker that we notice them straight away. If we look at that area, for example, it is difficult ground. Um, in the open though, we're going to play that as it's, as it's open. Um, so the, the entrance is a bit difficult, but the open ground is fine. So if I want to bring my scourge anti-aircraft on, I need to potentially, I'm going to move almost my full movement, so I'm not going to unload anything. I'm going to go there and drop a tank on the top, just to show my opponent that it's, whoop, just to show my opponent that the tanks are in there. Okay, so he's flying on up there. It now drops over to the UCM's go again. Um, there's an objective down there, isn't there? <laughs> so I think the UCM, again, slightly slower, aren't they? They're slightly slower, but he's going to zoom on 18, full distance with two barrier PCs to there. Back to the scourge. All I've got left is Slayer Grab Tanks. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom a Slayer Grab Tank unit on. Um, I think I'm going to try and unload actually, to be honest with you. I don't know. Nah. Now I'm going to wait for tactical flexibility. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that there. So he's not going to land. Uh, he's, a full, he's a unit full of Slayers. Uh, he's just going to hang around, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, last unit is the UCM. They're rail tanks. Now, it's probably a good idea to actually put some miniatures down on the board to show you what's happening. <laughs> so, again, he's going to move. Now, he can move now and fire, or he can, there's nothing to actually see, and it's probably going to leave him vulnerable. So, I'm actually going to move full distance. It's difficult, isn't it, when you're sort of playing yourself? Um, so as you can see, that's a good example. Now, that vehicle, theoretically, I can't see it, but it is assumed to be six inches high, so it's assumed to be here. <laughs> so the purpose is a line of sight and stuff like that. Um, it just leaves it set the, so people can't shave, flying stems down, things like that. It's just a, it's a standard rule. So that is literally the first turn for both players. We've moved on, everything's flying on, looks pretty cool and <laughs> um, that's it so there's nothing amazing has happened yet um, but then it goes straight back to initiative because there's no clean up stage anything like that if we were fighting the game whereby we had troops and buildings at the end of all the activations action phase roundup you have any special effects on units are done check of victory conditions and check of the game ends we then go to phase one again roll for initiative and then, at the beginning of the turn, we do all close combat. So, interesting. Let's have a look. So, UCM roll this time. Come up with a five. And the scourge roll again. Come up with a three. So this turn, the UCM will actually grab the initiative. So this is where they could actually punish, quite badly, the scourge. So, what we're going to do, if we look down here is an easy one, I think. Or shall we try and shoot that? No, let's do that. That's something different, isn't it? So, if I look at the Condor dropship, they actually have weapon options. Uh, so they have missile pods, twin Gatling cannons, and a moving fire of 9 and 6. So currently, nothing's anti-aircraft, so I can't actually shoot the, the dropships, um, except for my rapiers which are on the ground. So what I'm going to do straight away, it's all about the objective, so to speak, I am going to land that dropship he's going to land and the two bears are going to come out three inches from his central position okay and the infantry in turn are going to jump out into the building okay so I'm going to put both six squads I'm going to put six squads, now I'm going to put three squads in. So, one full unit. They have to remain in base-to-base -base contact. 
and they're currently in the centre of the building. You can't search for the objective first turn because they're still working the way up. Okay, so <coughs> that's out of one <coughs> there. <coughs> Second one's just going to bomb around the side a little bit like that. <coughs> so that is that is their turn done. It's now to the scourge. Now I get the feeling that there's probably going to be the same thing happen over there. It's all about infantry. It really is all about infantry. So he's going to land for two. Drop that one there. That one there. And he's going to take off again for two. He's then going to flit aside like that for the remainder of his move. And try and maybe shoot something down there. Okay. This invader is going to unleash its warriors into the building. Now, they're working their way up the building, so on and so forth. You just put them on the roof. It's just an example as to what's happening. So they're going to jump in there. And this invader is going to move. Now, it can only move half distance, because it did come out of a drop ship to stop things being ridiculously fast. So if you look at invader APC, it's got a move value of six. <laughs> so it can move three inches. <coughs> So three inches puts it there centre centre because we have to go for the objectives simple as that it's probably a bad tactical move but I want to show you what happens so we're going to try and shoot over there now if we check on the actual weaponry pre-measuring in the book it does state you can you can agree with your opponent what you want to do now the way that we're going to play it is I believe in the future it's reasonable to assume every weapon is going to have a targeting system so in the shooting phase, when you're shooting, we're going to know that that is 14 inches. Okay. So if you now look at the unit. <coughs> so, unfortunately, <laughs> all weapons have range values. So here we have range value 6 inch. So I'm out of range anyway. Um, Countermeasured range value 6 inch. I'll explain that in a second. Because all vehicles have some form of countermeasure which limits their range so you have two range values for your weaponry so he's put himself in a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a sticky situation but there you go so back over to the UCM's turn now I think that we're going to punish that dropship so he's going to take off because he was down and he's going to float over to that side in fact, he's going to float back there <laughs> to protect himself. Now, rapid, if we look at that. <clears throat> if we look at a rapier. They have a movement of four. They can move four inches and still fire their focus pattern vindicator, which is their anti-aircraft weapon. Now, they can choose to have a higher strength shot and lower shots, or they can have lower strength and higher shots. The AA is the one with higher strength. Okay, so each Vindicator has three shots, hitting on a three plus, infinite range against non countermeasured vehicles, which is unusual, 18 inch range against countermeasured vehicles, and it's got a front side and rear alternative articulated because it's on a turret. Okay, so each one of them's getting three shots, hitting on threes at strength energy, <laughs> not strength, energy seven. So, Ooh, they're well in range, but it's probably a good idea because I can still move them four inches. So I'm going to just spread out like that. So we've got three of them there, and they're all going to open fire at that scourge vehicle. But for the sake of the game, you do measure range. But I know it's well within 18 inches, so his countermeasures, unfortunately, are only jack. So, three shots each. Their accuracy rating is 3+. plus. Again, it's assumed in the future that a lot of the work is done by computers. <laughs> so, I need three sticks. Yep. Yeah. And then that is, so that is seven energy seven hits. Now I know that the armour value of a Marauder dropship is 5 and it has 3 damage points. So, down to the table, 
we have energy 7, armor 5, I need 3 pluses to score damage. So, 3 plus to score damage. So that's 1, 2, 3 points of damage there. Now this 5 row, because I needed a 3 to hit, and I've exceeded it by 2, that scores 2 points of damage. So that's actually 5 damage. Now that absolutely obliterates him. <laughs> he said oh, that's exceeded his damage points, so he is destroyed. Now there's no one transporting currently, so he is just removed from the game. There are additional rules for sort of explosions and so on and so forth, but suffice to say, that's dead. Now that dropship loss, which was my, or the Scourge's, infantry dropship, is a big loss. It is a very big loss. So, flipping back over to the Scourge's turn, <laughs> they're not doing very well are they so we're gonna jump this ship over seven inch and land so it's gonna fly over there he's gonna land for two inches and stay landed and disgorge his tanks so you may have noticed the game once you have a basic grasp of the rules the game plays incredibly fast um, it's an hour worst maximum um, obviously if you have a bigger bigger scale skirmish, <laughs> so it is a big difference. So we've just got those out of there. Now if we look at the Slayers, we're going to try and get some retribution. They can move 9 inches, Scourge are quite fast, and they have a Plasma Cannon, which has energy 11, so they're real tank killers, one shot hitting on a 2 plus. I can move my full 9 and still fire 12 inch, okay? even against countermeasures. So, because I discharge from a vehicle, I can only move half distance. So they're gonna shoot around the side, just like that. And now we're gonna fire at this full unit of rapiers. One, two, three, all in range. Look at that, it's as if somebody planned that. <laughs> so, the way that we do this, we don't just roll three dice, I say he's gonna fire at him, he's firing at him, he's firing at him. Other ways that I'm, I'm thinking to myself and Stu are going to play it is I'll just say there's three of those firing at those and it's gentlemanly, he can take away whichever ones he wants, it's not a problem. So, again, we know that they hit on a 2+, plus. so 3 shots, and they all score hits, so it's one hit on each tank. Now if you look at the, because they're a tank, not a dropship, I am going to actually need that energy 11 to do some damage. I said armor 10. Armor 10, but they only have one damage point. Okay, so if we look at our weapon energy 11, armor 10, I need fours. So, and again, remember in this case, if I were to roll any sixes, it will be double two damage points, but I only need to score one anyway. And I've actually wiped the whole unit out. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, so that literally is just take them off. Okay, it's a very tactical game, and obviously I'm just uh, engineering situations to explain to you guys how it plays. So they've wiped that unit through, as <laughs> simple as that, and it's now the UCM's turn. So it flips back over to UCM for their last activation. Now then, <laughs> he's going to. Uh, land so he's gonna shift to there and he's gonna land is he he's actually gonna jump over there jump over there and land let out his tanks at the end of the day we don't like the fact that these nasty scourge have just uh, come out of nowhere and caused some serious damage so three inch from there so they're gonna try and exact some revenge Okay, so, same principle, three tanks, if we look at them, the Sabre MTB, medium battle tank, so everyone knows, has an energy 10 Avenger railgun. Now if you notice, it's slightly less energy, hits on a 2 plus, so it's incredibly accurate, and has a 24 inch range against countermeasured vehicles, which scourge vehicles are. <laughs> Okay, it's one shot again as always. It also has a heavy machine gun at energy 4, which you can fire at the same time. So, what we'll do, we look at 
one shot per miniature same principle however skimmers which scourge vehicles are used skimmer technology reduces your chance to hit by two so I am actually only hitting on fours so I'll do my rail cannons first and suffice to say I've missed with every single shot which is fantastic and then if we look down I might as well have a go with our machine gun two shots each is only energy four but when we look at the scourge vehicles I believe their armour is a bit lower so they're only armour eight now we'll just check to see if I can actually hurt that energy four unfortunately cannot hurt armour eight so they're infantry slayers so that was a bit poor <laughs> so it's going to have to down to the dropship he has a missile pod <coughs> uh, so if we look at that his missile pod is energy eight it's one shot and hits on a three uh, it's got a six inch moving fire which he did stick to and nine inch against countermeasures so we know they're in range he hits for a five fortunately and he's missed so the scourge are quite difficult to hit <laughs> as we've noticed there but when you do hit them you hurt them so and the very devastating scourge at close range okay so it goes to the last scourge turn <coughs> which we are going to uh, this dropship do to do what you're going to do um, uh, he's going to actually Shift across, I think. No, he's going to land there. He's going to land there. Land there and let the Reapers out. So he's going to back up slightly, land there, and let the Reapers out. Now I'm going to, theoretically, that's hopefully covering the board uh, with a bit of anti air. Uh, it stops those dropships getting off. And when I need to, I can intercept a dropship which flies away with the objective. So that's the turn done. There's no close quarter combat, and we're going to now go straight on to the next initiative phase. 